Alright, this is my Gamma Scout, waiting to be exposed to straight radiation from a linear accelerator beam. You probably remember the linear accelerator, a nice device used to treat cancer in patients with very high energy radiation, mainly X-ray radiation. So my Gamma Scout is exactly one meter away from a 20 by 20 centimeter field that is facing the floor and striking through this carbon table where the Gamma Scout is on. Remember that the Gamma Scout as a Geiger Miller counter can only detect alpha, beta and gamma radiation and well x-ray radiation and proton radiation, charged particles and electromagnetic waves but no neutron radiation. But still let's see what the dose rate is. Irradiation has started and you can see little flashes of radiation striking my poor camera. As well as the camera in the control room of course where you can usually monitor a patient that is being irradiated. Here you can see all these flashes of radiation and maybe you can also see that you have some dead pixels on that camera CCD. That is because of very high energy proton and neutron radiation that damages the, those cameras so they need to be replaced every now and then depending on the usage of the linear accelerator. So, well, that does some additional damage to my camera but oh well. I guess. Let's see what the Gamma Scout is doing. You see we have those rates of not too much. Seems to settle around 1 millisievert per hour. So it's not so much. Not for the charged particle radiation. Nor uh, the photon radiation anyway. But what about the neutrons? Uh, we see the dose dropping as the machine, the Linux, is switched off. But you can see the dose rate on the Gamma Scout doesn't drop to normal levels. It's usually 0.2 microsieverts per hour as it was before. And now it's over 2 microsieverts per hour. What the hell is happening here? Let's see. Fetching my Gamma Scout. Now you can see. Still high background radiation here. I'm measuring the head of the linear accelerator. Which previously was not radioactive. You just have to trust me on that, but of course I measured it, I just didn't record it. And you can see, the head of the linear accelerator is radioactive, but so is the Gamma Scout. When I fetched the Gamma Scout, I didn't record that bit, but you can see, if I hold the Gamma Scout away from the linear accelerator, it will still read an increased background radiation reading, and it does so even when out of this room. I couldn't run around in the rest of the hospital with the camera, but yeah. So, the Gamma Scout, as well as other material in that room, especially metal on the linear accelerator, has Good. turned radioactive. I was just like really fascinated, so I was talking to myself like, wow, this is awesome. Stuff like that. Because it really is. Wow. So stuff turned radioactive. My Geiger counter has turned radioactive. How the heck did that happen? Let's admire the beauty of that linear accelerator and then let's investigate what happened here. So what exactly happened in the Linux linear accelerator therapy room? We had a very high energy photon beam. It had 18 mega electron volts, 18 million electron volts and when you have atoms you probably know from my other videos and photon radiation, that is x-ray radiation or gamma radiation uh, interacts with the atom, then sometimes you know that electrons can be removed from the atom so it can be ionized and a lot of stuff can happen but a special thing can happen if the energy of the photon exceeds 1.022 mega electron volts. That is double the resting energy of a, an electron and it's quite the magic energy to get to the core because if the photons have less energy than this then the core will make sure they do not get in. They can just sort of bounce them off as if with a force field you could imagine. They cannot get in they'll just have to pass by and move through. 
But when you exceed this magic energy, they can actually get into the core. So the photon can be absorbed by the core. And what it does then, it excites the atom. So the atom is like in a heightened state of energy and the atom really doesn't like this in any case whatever happens it doesn't like this so what it wants to do is it wants to get rid of the energy and it can do so by either emitting a proton or a neutron from the core so sometimes one of both these energies and the photon strikes the atom of a piece of matter whatever is in the way may it be a patient or a piece of whatever of a table, a piece of aluminum, whatever's in the way. Um, as I said, protons will be flying around, which are charged particles, a charge of plus one, and they will may do interactions sort of, well, kind of similar to an alpha particle, except an alpha particle would be two protons and two neutrons, but it's just a directly ionizing radiation as well. What's very interesting is when these neutrons get emitted. They have no charge, and they have thus uh, very good chances of getting into another atom. Um, it depends on the energy of the neutron, though, if they can get into another atom, and also on the type of atom it is. It, the so-called neutron cross-section, which is determined in Barnes, varies for the different elements. And what happens when a neutron is captured by a different element, like a non-radioactive element, it will absorb the neutron and uh, increase the, like let's say, uh, if it was uranium, 238, it would increase in mass number to uranium 239. And what uranium then does, it decays further and further into plutonium at some point, and the different elements may uh, may act differently when they absorb a neutron. Some undergo spontaneous fission, like uranium 235, often does, uh, 235, yes, sorry, and some elements may also still be stable elements, so they may have one more neutron, but still be non-radioactive, or, well, as I said, they might just turn into radioactive elements, like uranium, but not only uranium does this, uh, a lot of elements do, with varying probabilities, so it really depends, so, as I said, we had an 18 mega electron volts photon beam that exceeds this critical energy where the photon might get into the core of an atom of whatever is present in the beam or near the photon beam and that may result in protons and neutrons being ejected which again might be captured by other atoms and these might turn radioactive so that's exactly what happened some atoms actually captured some of these neutrons and turned radioactive. That was atoms in my Geiger counter, as well as atoms everywhere in the room and the linear accelerator itself. Most of these atoms are very short-lived, so they have a very short half-life, T-half. Um, so they're gone pretty quickly. So my Gamma Scout is not radioactive anymore, so that's a good thing. But it's still a very interesting effect. Some more advanced details. Okay, we have this 18 mega electron photon beams. The higher the energy, the better the uh, possibility of this effect of uh, photon entering uh, the core for a photon nuclear reaction and the emission of neutrons and protons. But we did not have a material with a high Z, with a high uh, atomic number. We did not have that, so that was not present. So that reduces the number of these interactions and neutrons that were produced. We did also not have a moderator, that is a substance that slows down the neutrons, contains hydrogen, can be, for example, normal water like H2O, or plastic, which is largely hydrogen as well. So we did not, not have anything of that present. This would have increased our chance for other atoms to absorb neutrons. Because, you know, if a ball flies really, really fast, you have a hard time to catch it. But if a ball is uh, thrown at you very slowly, then you might just catch it with your hand. It's sort of like that for atoms as well. There are some, there are some exceptions for that. For example, uranium-238 likes to capture the very fast neutrons and doesn't like the slow ones so much, but... A lot of atoms will like to capture the slow neutrons, like 
uranium-235, as well as many other elements, including the elements like copper, for example, that are present in my gamma scout. So, we didn't have any moderators, so we still had very fast neutrons. So that means we had a very high energetic photon beam, yes, but we didn't have material with a high Z, so no lead or no heavy material in the place. Also, the object that was turned radioactive was not in the direct beam. Not in the direct beam, where it would have been activated much more, as much more interactions would have resulted. What, I, what happened to my gamma scout was basically just stray radiation, as it was one, oops, one meter away from the center of a 20 by 20 square field where the radiation beam was striking the floor underneath. So in total, if we had considered putting, for example, lead or some heavy Z material into that high energy photon beam, moderating the radiation that comes out of it, which will be the, our lovely neutrons as well, to uh, thermal energies, and then placing a target behind it that has a very good neutron core section, would, would have been, for example, silver or cadmium, then we would have been left with very high activities of, for example, silver. I'm very surprised about this, because maybe you saw my video about the fuser, about the fusion reactor, that emitted like 10 to the power of 6, or maybe even 10 to the power of 7 neutrons per second, and we put silver right on top of it, and it was very hard to activate at all without a moderator. And with a moderator, well, you could see it turned mildly radioactive, but it was in a direct beam just above the fusion chamber where this happened. And in my case, I put the Gamma Scout, which is not very good at capturing neutrons, not like the silver metal, for example. And the Gamma Scout was one meter away from the main beam, and with a very lousy setup to produce neutrons. And still, it was radioactive with about 2 microsieverts per hour. Yes, 2 microsieverts per hour. Now, I'm pretty sure it was the Gamma Scout, by the way, because I lifted up the Gamma Scout and carried it around and stuff. And below the Gamma Scout was basically only a carbon table. And carbon is much, 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 much worse at absorbing neutrons than any of the materials in the Gamma Scout. So this was very surprising, even for me.